<laughs> I love these guys. Hey, Corey, let me see your swag. Byron, I didn't think it was possible, but you saying what you just did somehow make Dawkins and Ford less cool. Can you imagine all three of us walking into a club, cutting a rug or two? I can. Byron, you're humiliating yourself. Look, I am in with the street profits. Angelo no, Dawkins. You're not, Byron. You're making them less money right now. The street profits want nothing to do with you. These two dudes are legit, they're incredibly talented, they're tough, and they know how to have a good time that doesn't involve a bicycle museum. I even feel like dancing. Montez Ford is one of the best dressed guys in all of sports entertainment, and coming from me, that means something. Here comes the Undisputed Era. multi-faceted mixed martial arts backgrounds of both Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish make them a threat to each and every tag team in WWE. These were two men that had a reputation that preceded them after their success all over the world. But these are two men who have lived up to those expectations ever since showing up on NXT. They debuted alongside Adam Cole at NXT TakeOver Brooklyn 3 with one goal in mind, to shock the system. The Redragons. Looking at the future right there, gentlemen. It's hard to argue with that point, Michael. combined weight of 492 pounds, Montez Ford and Angelo Dawkins, the Street Profits. And their opponents, at a combined weight of 397 pounds, they are the NXT Tag Team Champions, Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby the Undisputed Era. Get ready for some WWE magic. Shocked the system, and so far he's well on his way to reaching that goal. Guys, there's nothing like a good old-fashioned tag team match. Part of the lawless outfit known as the Undisputed Era, O'Reilly is set to wreak havoc. Yeah, sometimes you need to go outside the bounds of the rule to make noise. Kyle O'Reilly knows that. Incredible striking cover. Challenger starting to falter. Looks like he may have let his guard down there for a moment and it cost him. It's decision time, Cole. Ouch. Does he try to get back on the offensive himself or does he attempt to make a tag here? I know it's early, but if things stayed the way they are, winning this match might just be a pipe dream for him. Oh, wow. 
What a stomp. Good grief. He's bringing it back inside the ring now. Boom! <laughs> a bad place to be for the challenger. His hopes of winning oh, this man. tag team match are starting to dwindle. If I'm his partner, I'm furious right now. There's no reason why he shouldn't have made a tag match. Ouch. Man, this is as one-sided an affair as you will ever see. If he goes on to lose this match, you have to expect it'll set him back quite a bit. Boom! Oh, what an elbow! as Montez Ford is feeling the pain that has been dealt out so far. His outlook is not good at all. Yeah, there's no way to sugarcoat this one. He's getting absolutely destroyed right now. Dominating shoulder tackle. Oh, nasty impact. During the rivalry between the Hardy Boys and Cesaro and Sheamus over the Raw Tag Team Championship, the teams became very familiar with one another. In June of 2017, the teams met in a two out of three falls bout on Monday Night Raw. The most important fall in a two out of three falls contest is the first fall. If the team can win the first fall, that sets the tone for the rest of the match and your opponents are playing catch up. O'Reilly just barely getting out of the way. The two out of three falls match to saw the Hardy Boys go at it with Cesaro and Sheamus was a throwback of sorts. Throughout the 1960s and 70s, championship title defenses and grudge matches were often decided in the two out of three falls format. Cesaro and Sheamus didn't waste any time and scored the decisive first fall after a broke kick rocked Jeff Hardy. Cesaro and Sheamus wanted to continue their domination of Team Extreme, but the Hardys had other ideas as Matt tied things up at one fall apiece after a twist of fate on the Swiss sideboard. After a swanton bomb by Jeff Hardy, the match broke down, and the third fall was ruled a double counter. Oh, he turns it around. Close line! Well, that'll leave a mark. Boom, what impact! And the instinct from Fish on display. So quick. and he could be done very soon. The champ might just have nothing left in his tank. That's over at this point. Tagged in. Oh, flying forearm. That'll turn your lights out. Drop down, leapfrog, harsh impact. Taken off his feet here. And it's moves like that that make him so dangerous. Guy. What a strike right on the mark. Big elbow. And that one grounds him. I didn't realize he had such a glass jaw. And he tags his partner in. Momentum has certainly shifted here, Michael. Well, Nelson. Angelo Dawkins just too quick. Goes down hard. O'Reilly just barely getting out of the way. What a slam! Impactful. It will jar your spine. 
Setting it up. Now, Brain Buster. Game, set, match. This one is over. And the odds just swung in Kyle O'Reilly's favor. When you talk about great tag teams, we can go all the way back to teams like the Tolos brothers, Stevens and Patterson, Stevens and Bockwinkle, the Texas Outlaws, the Briscoes, the Blackjacks, the Andersons, and the list goes on and on. When you're part of the tag team, the two partners have to travel together, train together, eat together, and be completely in sync with one another. He's not in a good spot here, guys. He simply needs to find a way to regroup. That's what you call a bad landing. Tag team competition dates back all the way to the early 1900s. Corey, you mentioned some of the classic duos from sports entertainment's incredible history. In today's WWE, the tag team scene has never been more competitive. I don't know who has the edge when it comes to talent. If it's Raw or SmackDown Live, I think it's too close to call. But all the teams truly think and act as one unit. I agree, Michael. Teams such as the Usos, American Alpha, Anderson and Gallows, The New Day, The Hardy Boys, Cesaro and Sheamus. I could be here all day naming championship caliber teams. And when the tag team scene is that competitive, you don't know which team will be wearing the gold. In order to be a premier tag team, a superstar and their teammate must have that continuity where they're a well-oiled machine inside the ring. I'm talking about classic techniques, like cutting the... Here he goes. Ah, the old sleeping with the fishes. <laughs> that has got to be it. Does Montez Ford even know where he is? Corey, a few moments ago, you took us through what it takes for a tag team to be successful. The continuity between tag team partners is crucial. When a team is able to keep one opponent in the ring for an extended period of time without making a tag, they're able to focus their attack on one individual and one body part. And that's when things really start to take shape if you're on the tag team that's in control of the match. When you look at the tag teams who have dominated this business, all of them worked well together as a unit and were able to keep an opponent in the ring long enough to make that adversary the focal point of their assault. In May of 2017, SmackDown Live saw an incredible women's tag team match when Charlotte Flair and Becky Lynch squared off against welcoming committee members Natalya and Carmella. The rivalry between these women got so intense that Naomi was in Flair and Lynch's corner and Tamina was in Natalya and Carmella's corner. Ooh, what impact! I think only a group as treacherous as the welcoming committee could bring Becky Lynch and Charlotte Flair back together. Natalia's power set the tone for the match and gave her team an advantage. That was until Carmella's overconfidence let the Irish last kicker turn the tide and get back into the match. And then it was elementary from there, the Irish-born superstar. Naomi did an excellent job of making sure any quote-unquote committee nonsense cost her girls the match. Once Becky Lynch got Carmella locked in the disarmor, there was nothing for the Staten Island Princess to do but to tap out. And it didn't take long for that to happen. For many years, members of the WWE Universe and the WWE locker room have felt that tag team matches should have two referees. One referee is in the ring overseeing the action, and the other is located out on the floor, making sure teams follow the rules and do not engage in potentially damaging behavior. I think it's a good idea, something perhaps Mr. McMahon might want to consider. Great job escaping, trying to turn this thing around. Big slam. A lot of pride on the line here in this tag team encounter, but only two of these competitors will end up getting what they came for. The win. You gotta believe this one's over. Gets out of the way of that one. Oh boy, he is rolling. Setting it up. Now, brain buster. This one is over. Just as devastating the second time around. Boom, what impact. Oh man, what a hit. This one is over. We got our money's worth for that one. Take a look. 
I could watch highlights of that one all night long. One of the great WWE matches I've ever been able to watch. That was just one of those matches that the men involved should just be proud to be a part of. A legendary performance. Another exciting tag team match in the books. I can tell you it's not easy to hold on to those titles, but somehow these two managed to make it look effortless. That'll do it for this tag team championship match. Thanks for watching.